Hello, my name is Tine. Today I got another great product from Banggood to show. It's Digital Readout. I received it into 4 packages. In this video I will remove the old iGag in tier O and install new one. And then take a look over it. I got a lot of questions about my mill. So here you can see the model. It's basic Chinese mini mill with long automatic support table. In the first box is 3-axis digital readout. There come also UK power supply cable, holder with screws and manual. The instructions look ok, but they are right and confusing. One manual for more type of DRO. There are a lot of buttons that isn't exist on my DRO, but the basic can be seen out of it. I got UK cable with it, but it's basic power supply cable, so I can use one from a PC. Also the holder is nicely designed, we can mount it them everywhere to machine and then set it to almost any position. What about the row? It's quite big but surprisingly light. It's almost just a plastic housing. There come nice protective plastic shield with it, but I got clean workshop and almost not using cooling liquid, so I don't use that. The buttons are ok, we got nice feeling when we press on them. In the other boxes is linear scales with mounting accessories and protective shield. Now first of all check the dimension of linear scale. I see a lot of people order wrong length. Yep, me too. As you can see I got here 300mm length scale. That's the number you choose on Banggood. But in reality it's about 435mm long and got more than 320mm measuring range. Let's plug the DRO now and check the other length. It's standard AC plug, input voltage 90 to 230 volts, so I can use other cable. There's also on amp fuse into the sockets. Inside we can find a small power supply and big circuit with lot of 7 sec LED displays. Now I plug the cable and turn on the switch. It works, but before connecting the scales turn it off. When we turn it on, it need about 3 seconds to get through the self-checking system. And here we can see now the total measuring length of each scale. Each scale got about 21mm longer measuring range than ordered. And the total length is about 110mm than measuring range. Banggood says that each scale is 141mm longer than measuring length. Actually it's about 134mm longer than ordered length. And there are a few other measures you may need. I really don't remember what I was thinking when I ordered the scales. Maybe about women's and stuff, but definitely not about linear scales length. So I ordered two scales wrong length. On my lock it was too long, so let's try to cut them and check them a bit closer. I needed Y axis scale 340mm long, so I will cut it off. First remove mounting block on each side of scale, which is attached with 4 M2.5 screws. Here we can see now how it works. Carriage is attached to a sensor with a spring, so it's got about 3mm of dead bend in all sides. The sensor is independently fixed to a glass scale with 5 bearings. Now we can pull the carriage and the sensor out of scale. I got some feeling about flying springs here, but it didn't happen. There's one single spring attached to a carriage which pulled the sensor behind and all of us fails on installation. Spring is designed so it always push sensor down and from a side to glass. On that two sides is also bearing which run direct to a glass scale. Sensor base got also screw for set clearance. Sensor itself got on one side 4 transmitter and on another side 4 receiver, which reading the marks on glass scale. Wires from a sensor going into the carriage, where's another circuit board with a chip and two trimmers. Here we can also shorten the main wires if you want. Now go to the scale and prepare it for cutting. After remove the mounting block on the other side, pull out the wipers, so we got better access to the glass scale. Here we got now extruded aluminium profile with the glass scale attached on a few points with rubber pieces. It's got nowhere to go because sensor or spring always push it down and right into aluminium teeth. If you want to pull out the glass scale we must remove all that rubbers, which is slightly glued on its place. 
I scratched them out with the spike tweezers, but be careful here so you don't scratch the glass scale. There's still some glue under the scale which slightly hold it on its position. Be careful there so you don't broke the glass. I don't know if it's important how it's turned or not, but I mark everything before disassembling. And here's the glass scale. It's got two lines along which run the bearings and the division scale in the middle, which is so tiny that almost can be seen. I see scale for the first time when produced and come to this photo. I need total length of scale about 340mm, before cutting I'll check the measuring length. On that length I got about 225mm measuring range, but I only need a 180mm for the Y axis, so that's ok. After we are 100% sure about length we need, simply cut the aluminium profile. Then align the rough end, and then you'll need to drill and cut new treats. I simply mark position of screw through the existing holes, and then continue drilling 2mm hole, cut M2.5 treat and cut chamfer. Now clean the profile and prepare to shorten the glass scale for same length as profile. I got this diamond glass cutting tool, but I chose diamond disc this time. Glass broke pretty soon, on my luck just on right spot. Now I got everything prepared to assemble scale back together. First you wipe glass scale with the lens swipe, then install them into profile and lock it with a single piece of rubber just to hold glass on its place. When the scale is aligned to its place, we can install other rubber pieces. This time use just a bit of silicon glue, but need to be really careful there when applying, so we don't dirt the scale. I glued all the rubber pieces on same spot like before our assembling, and also first rubber secure with the glue later. Now just install carriage with the sensor back to scale. It's pretty easy, even if it don't look so. But don't forget in wipers like I do, otherwise you'll need to disassemble once again. When everything on its place, screw back the mounting block on boot end. The longer X axis scale weight on same destiny, and when the boot scales are cut, make a test before installation. Boot cutted scales work perfect, so you can start with installation. Of course I need to remove old eye gagging DRO before install new one. I got this eye gagging DRO for exactly 3 years now and they still works good. It's accurate and there's no problem with battery consumption at all, but there's still one huge difference. New glass linear scale is more accurate, it's got 3 decimal, but honestly 0.01 or 2 decimal is enough accurate for me. Eye gagging work like caliper, so when you move the table you need to wait to see the actual position. Glass DRO is so fast that you can see actual position all the time. Maybe you think it's not important, but it is. Working is much faster and easier if you see actual position of the table in real time without any delay. Ok, now I got perfect length scales and it's about time to start with installation. X axis I will mount on the front of table, so I need to get rid of these limit switches for automatic support. It's about time, I am removing these switches for a while, because they are on the way also for the rotary table handle. Then I need to remove also screws for blocking the table and the limit switch activators, so I got clean flat surface. Mounting the scale here will be really easy job. I mount the scale on table with two M8 screws on both ends, and use a T-nut from the limit switch activators. Mounting blocks on scales allow us to set height, so I can fit it on perfect position. I don't want to scratch the scale with every work piece, so I mount it about 1mm lower than the table. I simply use it in parallel to get right distance. Now I need to mount the sensor. It's got a lot of dead bands, so we don't need to complicate with mounting accurately. I'll just try to mount it parallel with the scale, and make about 1mm clearance between scale and sensor. Align sensor to center of table and mark holes. Yep, that marker saved me again. Now I move table closer for easier assess, remove the wheel and protect the bearing from the ship. Then just punch the center of hole, drill and cut treat. Then I can simply mount the sensor with two M4 screws. 
This blockers I can just install back on, but there would not be any free space, so it can scratch the scale housing. I solved that problem on easiest way, so I make an adapter from M6 to M4 and glue them into existing M6 street. So I will use M4 blockers and I got 1mm clearance between scale and blocker. Now I'll mount the Z-axis scale. I try to turn every scale so that the wipers are away from the chip direction, otherwise scale become full of chip inside and it could easily happen to broke the glass. I just mark the position of top hole, then drill it and cut treat. Then make a special washer so I can use M4 treat instead of M8. Set the scale parallel with the Z-axis and make treat also at the bottom. Mounting blocks also allow us to set the scale later. Cast base of the mill isn't perfect strained. I'll just use a piece of brass so the scale isn't twisted. Now I need to connect sensor head to moving mill part, so let's make a holder. Sensor head got a lot of options to fix them. There are M5 treat from all the sides, so we can mount it with M5 or M4 screws. And there's also a groove for the nut. And now I need to mount the Y-axis scale. It was easy job if I mount it upward, but after first use it will be full of chip. So I mount it downward, got some problem with the free space, but it must go. So let's mark the position, drill holes and cut treat. Then I make a spacer for under the scale, because that part of mill isn't flat. The scale is now fixed. Now I need to make some holder to connect sensor to that two holes on the moving table. I just cut a piece of 3mm aluminium sheet, align them from all the sides and make holes for mounting. I make grooves so I can set the position later. Then make another 90 degree groove so I can bend it, otherwise it will broke. You see how easy it is to bend? And it bent in perfect line. Ok, now make another groove and bend once again. Later I make another groove on other side, then I make a test and when it's fit perfect it's time to weld weakness spot. I use this rod for soldering aluminium, it's hold really well and the best part is that it's not changed the position like by welding steel, so after soldering it will fit on its place just like before. When the part cool down I make holes for tool to reach the screw head. and the groove for mounting sensor. Just a bit of final touch. And the holder is ready for mounting. I think it's come out really nice. On all three sensors got now about 1mm clearance from the rail. Now it's time for cable management. Also cable holder I make out of aluminium. Just try dimensions so it grab the cable when tightening till the end.
They hold cable on its place really good, and don't worry, I leave enough cable so it won't stretch in any position of table. Now I need to mount the digital readout. As I said, the holder reach come with all of us to set almost in any position, but I mount it direct to mill electronic box so it will be more rigid. Well, on the end I use UK power cable anyway, but I cut them and take power source direct from mill. Ok, digital readout is now mounted, but I got a few more things to do. Firstly I will cut off M6 reach from dead blockers and replace them with M4. They still be strong enough and also I don't use them too often. And then these limit switches. Honestly I didn't use them yet, so I won't just make a bridge instead of switches, but then decided to make like it should be. So I print a holder to mount mi micro switches under the table. I also add spring on the holders because if we moving table with full speed it need more time to stop and meanwhile it can crash the switch. If I want to hide cables into the T-slot behind the scale I must remove them. Before I put it back on I tape double sided tape on scale so that the chip can go into tiny groove between scale and table. Then just make the wiring of the switches and that's it. Oh well I get rid of another cable. That switches was really on bad place, actually I removing them from the day I buy that mill. It works just like it must, and I'm very happy with the result, everything become much cleaner and easier for cleaning the chip. Another video become too long, and I still got a lot of video material, but I think it's got no sense to explain another 20 minutes about all the functions, so I just show you a few settings and functions that digital readout can do. As I say, into manual is some other DRO, with much more buttons than this one got, but after a few hours of playing around, you'll know more or less every function. When we turned on, DRO go to the self-checking system. On the display we can see the type of scale, so linear, resolution 5 micron on all axis and on the right side is some number. I think it's the code to make factory reset. Now turn on again and during self checking press S button to get into the setup menu. I was playing around with all the functions, so firstly I will clear out. For that we need to type passwords, number that show on the beginning work for me. Then I try to change resolution, x axis set to 1 micron and y axis to 10 micron but soon figured out that the 5 micron is the right settings. Here in the setup menu we got many more settings, honestly I don't know yet for all the functions, but there is one important settings. Under the late we must choose none if we use on a mill, otherwise some of axis will display us in double value as that go on the late. I got now everything set up, so I just show you a few functions. First make some holes in a row. That's really easy, we just go to starting point, zero all axis and then set the line length. That's mean from center of the first hole to center of the last hole. Then choose angel. If we set zero we only move x axis. And then set also the hole number and that's it. Then just find zero for each hole and drill. Other great function is drilling holes into circle. First we need to set radius. I set 20 mm, so the holes will be drilled into 40 mm diameter. Then set starting angle and end angle. I set starting to 0 degree and ending to 360 degree. But that means that the last hole will be in the same position as first hole. So I must choose 7 hole if I want to get 6 hole. Otherwise I must set starting angle in 0 and end angle in 300 degree. 
but we must calculate, which is not problem because that DRO got also calculator with basic functions. I will definitely use this function. Another awesome function is for making the radius. We can make it on any two axes. We must set the diameter we want, direction of radius, tool diameter, inner or outer radius, resolution and so on. I make R5 radius and with 0.5mm resolution I got 27 points. If we use smaller resolution there will be more points and smoother radius. But on XY axis radius become really nice with 0.5 resolution. Because of the tool is round. If I use YZ axis 0.5 resolution is way too big. But one of best function is definitely one half. Centering with that function was never so easy. I just found a touch and press zero, then go to other side and find touch again. And then just press one half button and then the axis you want to split. Now go to zero and you are in perfect center by x axis. Now repeat also on y and z if you need. I tried to make also some amateur measuring of precision. I got nothing to tell here, it's too precise for me. I think that's it for today. I got many more video material and a lot more to tell, but I just want to present that great digital readout here. If you buy them, you got all the functions really soon because it's easy to use. Don't worry about that. I almost forget to tell most important thing. Price. Price of that DRO is almost funny. Display can get from $75 and scale start at $34, depends on scale length. So 3x's kit like I got come about $250, which is really cheap. Here in Europe same DRO without any brand cost about 1000 euros. I already used them a bit and so far work perfect. I'm really happy with the product. If you got any question feel free to type comment. Link to product is below. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.